I heard a lot about this library called View Component from GitHub, and I wanted to see what the excitement is all about. So after spending a few days playing with the library, I was surprised by what I found. There is one feature in particular that surprised me the most, and I want to tell you all about it. But first, let's take a quick look at all its features. As a first-time user of the library, I must say that the homepage doesn't do much in terms of answering some of the burning questions that I had before I started playing with the library. Questions like, why do I need this? What problem does it solve? What's wrong with the standard Rails approach? Keep in mind that this library was developed at GitHub to solve a very specific problem that they had. And the scale at which GitHub operates is very different than the scale at which most Rails applications operate. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, on their homepage, there are two big selling points. The first one is better OO design through single responsibility, testing, and dependency injection. And the second is performance. So let's address both of these first, and then I'll tell you what I think the big feature actually is. In terms of improving your Rails app's OO design, I think the library does a decent job, but I'm not entirely sure it's worth the investment. It tries to reinvent Rails' views through the component architecture, where you have simple Ruby objects that are nicely encapsulated, making interactions and dependencies explicit. And that's a big goal, but I don't think they're quite there yet, or if they'll ever be. While some dependencies are made explicit, like everything you pass into the constructor, others are not, like the Rails' view context, which gives you access to the current controller and all the global view helpers. So unless you reinvent the wheel and rewrite the Rails helpers, you'll probably need to access that view context a lot. And that creates coupling. There's also this statement on their homepage that doesn't sit well with me. In their words, unlike traditional Rails templates, view components can be unit tested. It's either the folks at GitHub didn't hear about view tests by now, which I doubt, or I'm missing something in their claim. Then they also mentioned that in the GitHub codebase, view component unit tests are over 100 times faster than similar controller tests. Well, duh, of course they are. Unit tests are faster than integration tests. We already knew this, but they also serve totally different purposes. And unit testing your view components doesn't mean you don't have to write integration tests anymore. Rails views are usually dumb, and they change a lot for reasons other than behavior changes, and that's why unit testing views isn't worth the effort. An example of a view change could be to change the button text from buy to add to cart. And you don't want your test to fail when you do that, because it's not a change in behavior. That's just an example, which is easy to fix with translations, but the point is, the view is an implementation detail. As long as the user can achieve his task, we're good. Doesn't matter if the button is blue or green, or if the text is smaller or bigger, or if the sidebar is on the left or on the right. Those are presentation details that should change a lot, but without making your test fail. So I'm not really sold on this one. Now let's talk about performance. This one sounds like a valid selling point, even though it's not the most attractive. I'll get to the one that is in a second. I've seen some benchmarks suggesting that this claim is indeed valid. Even though it might not be 10x, it's still an improvement over partials. So if your project does require a faster render for partials, and you think that the effort is worth it, go for it. So that's nice. But there's a somewhat hidden benefit that I find much more interesting, and that is the ability to create design systems similar to how you would do it in React, but without having to build a single page app or even use React at all. A set of pluggable components that work well with Hotwire and that you don't have to build yourself every time you create a new project would indeed be helpful. For that reason alone, I think View Component is worth exploring. So let's try to build a view component and see if we can use it with Hotwire. For this example, I'll create a form component for building new users. But first, let's create a new project called view component and CD into it. And let's also add the table in CSS gem just to make the form look prettier. We're going to need a user object with a name field and an email field. And we're going to display the form and the users it creates on the home page. And for that, I'm going to create a site controller with an index action. And for creating users, I'm going to create a users controller with a new action and a create action. And for this setup to work, I need to also run the Tailwind CSS installer. Now let's add a root for the home page and another for the users. 
I'll point the root route to the site controller and use the resources helper to add the user routes. And on the home page, I want to have one user to pass it to the form and the list of users to list all the users in the database. But the users controller will only be concerned about creating new users. And for that, I'm going to add some logic to the create action. Namely, I'm going to get the params. And if the user can be saved to the database, I'm going to set a flash notice. Otherwise, I'm going to re-render the new action. And I also need to define the user params method, which is called by the create action. So now we're ready to add the view component gem. And I'm going to generate a new component called new user form. And the stimulus flag generates the stimulus controller file. So if we take a look at the generated files, you'll see we have a Ruby file called new user form component and the view template, which is used to generate the HTML using the data provided by the Ruby file. Lastly, there is a stimulus controller file, which we've generated using the stimulus flag. But this doesn't work yet. We need to do some setup for it to be picked up by Rails. So let's add an initializer for our form component, which instantiates a user class and assigns it to an instance variable. And now let's go to the view, and I'm just going to copy and paste some code here. I've prepared this form ahead of time. And in here, we have a full name, which is a text field. We have an email, which is an email field. And we have a submit button. And the stimulus controller is just a default controller. So I'm going to go ahead and add this component to my home page. But I'm not going to render it inline. I'm just going to create a helper for it called new user form. And inside of it, I'm simply going to render the component. I want to display this component on the left side of the page. And on the right side, I want to list all the users created. And I'm also going to make some room here for adding an alert component later. That component is going to display the flash notifications. But first, let's add the users list on the home page. And for that, I'm going to create a users div and an h2 as the heading. And inside of it, I'm going to call a helper, which will render a list of user details components. So I'm going to call this helper users, and it will take a collection of users. But instead of instantiating the component, it will call with collection and pass it the list of users. Now we need to create that component because we don't have it yet. And the initializer is going to be very straightforward. It takes a user as an argument and assigns it to an instance variable. Also, the template is not going to be too complicated. It's just printing the name and the email in parentheses. And for a bit of animation, I'm going to add a CSS class, which is going to animate the user details when we create a new user. Lastly, we need to specify that the collection parameter is called user instead of user details. And for Tailwind to pick up the classes defined in the component template, we need to add the app components folder in the Tailwind CSS config. So now we have the user form component on the left and the user's list on the right. But before we can test this, there are a few more things we need to add. And the first one is going to be the create turbo stream template. And inside of it, we need to first update the new user form component. And we also need to append the newly created user to the user's list by rendering the user's details. And that helper we don't have yet. So let's create it. I'm going to copy the one for the collection. And instead of calling the with collection method, I'm going to initialize the component and pass it the newly created user. So if we switch to the browser now and add a new record, you'll see the user details showing up on the right and the CSS animation. The final component we're going to add is called alert. And it's going to be used to display the flash notices. And again, I'm going to copy and paste some HTML code, which I've copied from the Tailwind CSS site. And inside initializer, I'm going to send the message and a type for the alert. And I'm also going to make those available in the view. The alert component will be rendered in the application layout via a helper called flash alert. And I'm going to define the flash alert helper in the application helper module. All it does is it renders the alert component, passing it the flash message if available. Now that we have the helper defined, we can use it in our turbo stream response to update the flash ID found in the application layout. And let me also fix a small typo here. So now we're ready to try this in the browser. I'll create a new user, and as you can see, the flash alert shows at the top. But there's one thing that still doesn't work, and that is removing the flash via the close button. So I'll go to my stimulus controller file and define a close method that simply removes the element from the page. And this method is already called in the view via this data action. 
so we don't have to do anything else here. But we do have to add some configuration code to make this work in Rails. The first thing is to add the components folder to the manifest.js file. The second is to lazy load the controllers found in the components folder. The third is to make this JavaScript available in the asset pipeline. And finally, to pin the components folder in the import map config. And now we're ready to give it a try. I'll create a new record and I'll try to close a flash. And as you can see, it now works. In conclusion, here are some of the things I like about this library and some of the things I don't like about it. Starting with the things I like, if it gets more popular or even integrated into Rails at some point in the future, it will change how we build Rails views in a good way. The potential to reuse components across projects is what excites me the most about it because it can cut down the time and the boilerplate code you need to write with every new project. Another thing I like is being able to create design systems that help you build a more consistent UI, especially if you work in a large team. If you have a design system built for you, it reduces the time you need to think about or tinker with various UI elements. Also worth mentioning is that the company behind it is GitHub, so it's very likely they'll maintain the library in the future. But there are also a few things I don't like about it. While I do see some potential here, I also feel like there are currently some rough edges around dependency management and hardware integration, which I hope will be solved at some point in the future. I believe that the goal of the library isn't to make these components easy to reuse across projects or even to go full-on component architecture, but to improve existing projects through refactoring. So to me, it's a tool for managing view complexity, namely when your view logic becomes unmanageable, you can move that logic into unit testable components. That makes a lot of sense, but mostly when working on large Rails projects. Another thing that I would consider before using it is it's a third-party library. And as you can see, there are some open issues around Rails integration, especially with Hotwire, that have not been resolved for almost a year. So you're taking a bit of a risk if you depend on it too much. That's just a consequence of using a third-party library and something to consider, but not necessarily a fault of the library itself. All that being said, I'm really excited to see how this library evolves in the near future.